Okay, so if you make one of these fun dashboards um, using Shiny or, or Flex Dashboard or with Plotly, um, you have to be able to share that with people. You want people to look at it. Um, and it, it gets complicated because if you make something in ggplotly and then knit to Word or knit to PDF, you're not going to see any, uh, any, any interactive stuff. It actually omits the whole graph. It doesn't show it because you can't have interactive JavaScript HTML inside a PDF or inside a Word file. It doesn't work. Um, and so there are other ways that you can get that interactive HTML and be able to share it with people. And so the whole point of having you write stuff in our markdown is that the idea is you can write something in one document and then make different types of output. So if you need to share that document with somebody who then needs to do fancy editing in Word, um, or if they want to give you comments using track changes, you can knit as Word and then send that to them and then they can go through and make all of their changes and then you can incorporate those changes in your R Markdown file. Um, if you're just sharing a PDF report with somebody, you can knit to PDF and then send that out. And so um, generally, like our markdown is kind of the main hub where you make all of your edits and then you make content um, that um, you can do stuff with. So after you knit, you generally get some sort of output and then you have to do something with it. So if you're knitting to PDF or, or Word, you can just email that to somebody, send it to them through Slack, send it to them through messages, WhatsApp, whatever. Um, just get them a file, and then they have a file. When you knit to HTML, though, it's a little bit trickier because you're making an HTML file, which is basically just a website. By default, when you knit to HTML, um, R will make a standalone HTML file, which means it will embed all of the graphics directly into the HTML file instead of making them like separate images and then pointing to them. Um, and it will try to embed any JavaScript and CSS and other styling things so that in theory, you could email that standalone HTML file to somebody and then they could open it and they could see all of the results and everything. And so that, that works. But because it's embedding all of the images directly in the document, you can sometimes get like an HTML file that's like 20 megabytes big and that's huge. Um, if you were knitting to Word, they'd be a lot more compressed. If you were knitting to PDF, then they all turn into vectors and they're super tiny. Um, and so if you're, if you're trying to send around an HTML file, that gets really tricky and it's, it's heavy in computer language. Like you don't want to be doing that. So also standalone files don't always work very well if you have anything that's interactive. Um, so if you have a plotly plot in there, um, if you then email that HTML file to somebody, they'll be able to see most of the stuff. They may or may not be able to see the interactive stuff. It depends on um, a host of, of uh, settings on their computer. And so it's, it's tricky that way. And so one option is that you can post stuff online. Um, if you take that HTML, HTML file with the interactive stuff, or even if it's not interactive, and post that somewhere on the internet, then you can send somebody a URL and they can visit that on their computer and then it, then it will work. You don't need to worry about emailing 20 megabyte HTML files. It'll just live on the internet somewhere and they can go look at it. Um, or they can share it. And like you just have a regular URL that you can do whatever you want with. So the way you do this, there's a few different ways. Um, the easiest way is actually built into our studio. And you may have missed it. Um, it. It's kind of hard to see when you're knitting things. If you ever knit to HTML, there's a button in the top corner of the HTML preview that says publish. And if you click on that drop down menu, it will um, let you publish the knitted version of your document to the internet, to a website that is called rpubs. And so rpubs is just a, a fancy website that is hosted by our studio that just has a whole bunch of knitted files on it. And you can share those, those URLs that are hosted there. Um, so what I'm gonna do really quick, is show you an example of this. So you can see what it looks like to use our pubs. Um, a really quick example. So let's switch to a different screen here so you can see what's going on. Okay, so let's move that out of the way. So what I'm gonna do is open up our studio here. I already have a, an R Markdown file here that I wrote. Um, it's just, it has some text in it, it has a heading in it, it has another heading in it. This is just going to make um, a plot using the Gapminder data set, and it's going to include a static version of the plot and an interactive version of the plot. So if I knit this 
to HTML, what it will do is make an HTML file. It's thinking. Almost done. It goes really slow when I'm recording here for whatever reason. So it should pop up the preview of the HTML file. And there it is. Almost. There it is. Okay, so if you look here, there's the, the heading with our text. There's another heading. Here's the code. And then the image embedded directly in the document. And then if you scroll down, here, here's the interactive version. We can hover over the different points. We can zoom in. We can zoom out. We have everything we need. We can turn off the Americas, turn off Africa, turn them back on, do whatever we want. So we have this thing, and we want to share this with somebody. If you look in the files panel, we have an HTML file here called publishme.html. We could send that to people in an email or something, um, but it might not work with the interactive stuff. Um, this has one graphic in it, but if we add a lot more graphics, then that HTML file is going to get really big because all of these things are embedded directly in, in the code here. So if you look at the top corner here, there's this drop-down menu that says publish document. So if you click on that, it asks you where you want to publish it. You can publish it at our pubs, which is this free service that our studio has for, for hosting knitted files. There's this other thing called our studio connect, which is a more private version of our pubs, but it costs money and it has to be hosted on like a company server or something. So if you work for some organization that uses R extensively, um, they'll often have an our studio connect server and you can publish stuff there. And it's, it's just like our pubs. Um, but, um, we don't have that set up for this class and, and it costs money, so we're not going to do that. So you're just going to use our pubs. And so it'll it'll tell you what our pubs is. So if I click on publish here, it's going to upload this document to our pubs. And then it should open up a browser window that looks like this. Let's bring it over here. Okay, so it skipped to step two. Step one is it has you log in. And if you haven't created an account, you can create an account. I'm already logged in here, so I didn't need to do that. Um, so here we can give it a title. We can call this document testing fun things. You can give it some sort of description if you want, and then you can choose the URL. So it's going to generate this URL of rpubs.com slash your username slash whatever we want. So we can call this testing knitted file. And if I click on continue, what it should do is it will create or it will show the document. So here's that same document that we knitted. It has the embedded static image and it has the interactive plot right here, which again, we can zoom in, we can zoom out, we can do whatever we want with. And it has a URL. And so if we copy that URL and send that to somebody or post it to Slack or send it to your parents to show the cool thing that you made, do that. Um, it's totally shareable now. Um, if you come back to our studio and make some edits and add some new plots and then knit again, this button no longer says publish, it says republish. And so it'll send the updated version up to the RPUBS website and then you can continue to work with it um, and, and continue to share what you've made. And so that's one really easy way of sharing this stuff. You don't have to have your own server. Um, you just click on the publish button and then you can share this with the world um, and it, share it with interactivity, which is super cool. So play with our pubs, share things that way. It should be fun. Um, so let's get back to our slides here. So our pubs works directly from our studio. You can use it from any knitted document. Um, you just have to click on the publish document button. Um, in addition to um, knitted document, like regular R Markdown files, you can use it for flex dashboards too. So if you make a simple flex dashboard with a whole bunch of uh, ggplotly animated things or interactive things, um, you can publish that to R pubs as well. And then you don't need to worry about hosting it on some server somewhere. If your Flex dashboard uses any of the fancy shiny um, interactivity so that you can have like reactive elements, um, so that research page that I have um, that I showed you a couple slides ago that like I can manipulate different things, that will not work on our pubs. That has to be published on a shiny server. Um, there is a free way of hosting apps or shiny apps on a, on a server. 
Um, it's the shinyapps.io website. If you go there, um, you can create a free account and you are limited to five applications that are active at a time. Um, so you can create as many dashboards as you want. And then if you go beyond the five, you can turn some of them off um, or pay for their uh, official paid accounts. Um, and so that, that's one way you can share these interactive um, and reactive um, Flex dashboards um, on the internet. If you are interested in doing any Shiny app development, you can put an entire Shiny app at um, shinyapps.io. All of those examples um, that you use through the RStudio Shiny and Flex dashboard documentation, um, about half of those were hosted at Shiny Apps and half were hosted on their internal version of like RStudio Connect, which is like Shiny Apps, but um, for organizations specifically. Um, so you can put stuff there and it should work well. Um, an alternative is you can actually do all of this on your own. If you have a web server, you can upload your knitted documents there. Um, if you have a fancier web server and have access to the actual like operating system, you can install RStudio, um, you can like your own version of RStudio Cloud. Um, you can install your own version of a Shiny server and then you can have everything be hosted there internally and that's great. Um, that is actually important if you're working with any private data. Um, so one issue with our pubs is anything that you um, upload there is publicly accessible. Um, there, people aren't going to be able to find it unless they know the exact URL. It's kind of like Google Docs. Um, when you make a brand new Google Docs document and then you share it and make it public, you have this really long hairy URL at the top and nobody can actually access it unless they know the URL. Um, and that's the same thing with our pubs. People aren't going to be able to find stuff um, unless they know the exact URL. So um, you have some semi-privacy there just through uh, being really obscure. But if you have any private information or personally identifiable information, especially if you're working like with medical stuff, don't publish that stuff to our pubs or to shiny apps because people will be able to access it. That's general public. And so you don't want to do that. Um, what lots of organizations do if they do deal with uh, private information is they'll have a shiny app server in like inside their organization and that's where you can host stuff and that's where you can access all of the different apps. So be aware of that. Um, but that's basically the, the, the general ways of sharing these HTML files and sharing these dashboards and these applications. And so you can get your, your interactive stuff out there on the internet and you can share it with people and um, feel proud that you can make this really cool stuff with R with just a few simple commands. So good luck and have fun with your exercise for today.